guys, so we're in Kinsale. Anchor's been down for a couple of days now, and this is a familiar place to us because we've anchored here before, 10 months ago. We were the only boat anchored here when we first got here, and we've been joined by another boat up ahead of us. This anchorage gets a little bit crazy, which we knew about from the last time. Welcome to Sailing Gypsy. Two years ago, we knew nothing about sailing, but took off from Canada with an urge for adventure. I'm Steph, this is Travis, and this is our home, Gypsy. We moved quickly and in a short time have made it down south and even crossed an ocean, but we still have a whole lot more of the world to see. Subscribe and join our life on the water. We were kind of flailing all about here when the wind and the current, when they were opposing, we were over our anchor, over by that ball, we were over there, it was just nuts. So if you do come here by sailboat and anchoring, I would just pay attention to any northerly or southerly winds before heading off the boat. Just know that you're probably gonna be surfing all over the place, depending on when the current's coming in or out. Just kind of be mindful of that. We've had to re-anchor a couple of times because you know when boats come in to pick up moorings, we might actually end up being too close to them. And if they're picking up a ball, they've kind of got the right of spot, I guess. Uh, and then over by the channel where we actually like it a little bit more, you're not surfing all over the place. You can't really anchor there because, unless if you go really far out. Otherwise, you're kind of in the way of the shipping traffic and the harbor master doesn't want you to you know, be in the channel because you could get hit and there's just a lot of traffic. So here we are. Winds have settled down for now. So we're in a better position than we were a couple of days ago when we first got here. But now we're heading off the boat. We're going to actually go over there. We're going to take the dinghy across, walk over to this little beach and we're going to be collecting some sand. And we'll tell you why we're collecting sand as we head over there. What's your story? What's your sign? We're not off to a good start. So we're gonna toss this in the recycling. And then we realized that we didn't actually bring bags with us to collect sand. So we're gonna try our best to stuff them into these little openings here. And the reason why we're collecting sand, crossing over to Spain, there's a whole bunch of concern in the cruising community about these orcas that have been attacking sailboats, swimming up to the boats, hitting the rudder, damaging boats, and really scaring cruisers out there. So. We're hoping we don't see any orcas. Uh, dolphins, yes, no orcas. Some people have been saying to collect sand just in case and, you know, sprinkle it in the water to deter them. I don't know if that works, but we have sand close by and I'd rather just go get it in case. Hopefully we don't ever have to use these, but we're gonna get it anyway. There's a cruise ship. And some dog shit. The sand is actually really soft and dry. It was raining a bit. Will this work? We have no idea. With the orcas, there are these groups that talk about it. Like, you could find so many discussions about it on Facebook. I'm also part of this huge WhatsApp community where there's like several different groups. There's a Spain and Portugal sailing group, an Orca discussion group, Orca location group. It's just, it's a huge community. It's one of those group chats you have to kind of mute because you literally get, I don't know, hundreds of messages every half an hour or so. Uh, but yeah, a lot of useful information on there. So a lot of people, cruisers have been tracking where the orcas are. So like, they'll say, okay, I'm departing from this port, going to this bay, and I saw orcas or I didn't see orcas. If I did, was there an incident? They made contact. What did I do as a reaction? So everyone's kind of on it and it's a major concern. We're hoping we don't see anything. I don't care to see them in the water. They are beautiful creatures. But not when they attack the boat. No. <laughs> <laughs> they're assholes. And nobody knows why they're doing it. I mean, there's a lot of hypotheses about it. But 
I don't know, like one thing was maybe a baby calf got injured by a sailboat once upon a time and the adults are teaching their young to retaliate against sailboats. I don't know if I believe that one. Another one is that they're just curious about the propeller wanting to play and then they attack the rudder when they don't see the prop spinning. I don't know. No idea. What do you think? I don't know, but this just seems so silly. Like, sure, maybe if I hack this whole thing at them, <laughs> yes. it might deter. But what the the idea behind the sand is you you sprinkle it in the water and it's supposed to get in their eyes and ir irritate them a bit. So I don't know. It's something that's not harmful and we could try, right? So. And if we had it right in our backyard, and we, it's one of those things. Yeah. Like, obviously, I'm pretty sure you can dump a truckload of sand and that would really deter them well but we'll try it why not right <laughs> and we've read things about sailors you know stopping and just floating sails down motors off kind of just playing dead and hoping that the orcas go away and then we've read other things where nope you got a motor out of the vicinity and you got to go like four to six knots um what else have we read? There's so much that I've been reading about it. But they oh. all kind of contradict each other. Yeah, I don't know. I think what I read last, there was one family of orcas and they split up into two about 10 years ago. And those are the two groups that are making contact with sailboats. So I don't know, I've been reading up on it a lot and it's kind of freaking Travis out. I'm just like, I don't want to think about it. Maybe we just won't have you don't think about it. The best thing that anyone could do would be to track, put tags on these whales that are attacking the boats. They're working on so it. So you'd literally be able to go onto a website and see exactly where they are, and you just stay clear of the area. And I think that would be overall the best solution ever. And you don't have to worry about it at all, but that's still obviously in progress. Yeah, like right now they've got apps and websites that have been tracking locations where they've been sighted and where there have been incidents. Seems like right now at this time of year, they're all kind of in the Gibraltar Strait. And from what I've read, as it warms up and gets hotter in the summer, they start making their way north and, and they stay clear of where the pilot whales are. So I don't know, right, right now they're down south. I just hope we make it down south before they start heading uh, oh no! So we we cross them path. anyways. We yeah, we'll cross them. their paths anyways. But hopefully, we don't okay, see them crossing their paths. Okay, whatever. I hope we just don't see them. Hey, pooch! <laughs> People were talking about these pingers that you can get, um, that you put in the water, and I guess they give off some sort of frequency to deter them. People are selling them once they've gotten to where they need to go and don't have a concern for them anymore. And it's a whole thing right now. Wish it wasn't. But all right, I'm full. Travis, do it. una expedición al Polo Sur. Quiere ir? Yeah, absolutely. We definitely should do it. <laughs> that was. There's an expedition to go to the South Pole. Do you want to go? I answered correctly. <laughs> Wasn't that the right answer? For the last several months, it's been really nice being in the UK, Ireland, Scotland, where everybody speaks English because we've been able to easily communicate with everybody. We like to try to learn languages of the places that we go to. So since we're heading to Spain, I'm trying to learn Spanish again using this app on my phone, which is super easy to use and it's actually quite fun. I've been using Babbel. I picked the travel lessons because that's obviously going to be what's most useful and relevant for me. I spend about 10-15 minutes a day, like the lessons don't take very long at all, but I kind of just end up going through them and going through them because I just, I like it, I think it's fun. If you're interested in learning a language yourself, we do have 60% off your subscription to Babbel. Just use the link that I'm going to put in the description box below. Also, please do leave us a comment letting us know what language you'd like to learn and why. So while Steph learned some Spanish, I'm going to install some shiny bits. 
And by shiny bits, I mean we're gonna redo our bathroom faucets. One, because they're, they're inefficient. It's a two dial system, so you have to like turn the cold on, turn the hot on, and then you're wasting a lot of water, you know, trying to get the right temperature. And also our shower head stopped working for some reason. And our shower head needs to be an on off switch, which was really hard to find. So we ended up having to order some stuff online. And instead of finding another shower head that had an on off button, I was actually able to find this guy, which as you can see, it has its own on off. The nice thing too, it's not only on off, it actually controls the water pressure as well. So that's super cool. So we can use any head attached to this guy. So we won't have to worry about sourcing out another shower head uh, if this one breaks, which I don't think it will. It's the simplest construction. Like, that's it. That's our shower head. Got a cool, like, silicone spray nozzle, ergonomic design. It's great. So then all I gotta do is screw that guy to there, and now we have a nice controlled pressure. This is our new faucet. We figured it was gonna be a lot more efficient because hot and cold is on a single handle and we can also control the pressure as well. So once we get it to the right temperature, we can just get the right pressure as well. And then there we, we got a hose and then the holder. So let's go ahead and get this installed. This is our current situation here, which I don't ever think we're gonna need a faucet. We're never gonna fill this bathtub with water. So, time to go. These seem to look like they're the same size, so I'd be in a bit of a predicament if this screws into here. Because then, do I replace these elbows or not? I don't know how they're attached through the wall to the inside the engine room. But let's see seems to line up. Alright. Since I don't know how these go through and I don't know if that's a special sort of elbow, but I think I might just leave well enough alone because I know this bulkhead and the gap between this fiberglass layer into the engine room is about that thick. So they drill the hole up here through it and that's the elbow the, the tap came with, so I wouldn't even be able to get this thing through. So I'm not even gonna try to, to change these out. It doesn't make sense. And then that's the cover it came with, which is, you know, that big. So as you can see, I wouldn't get any threads onto anything in here. I'm really lucky that these are the exact same threads for the new faucet, so I can just screw them on. I just have to clean this up, polish it up, make it look pretty. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Just gotta put some new tape around the threads. And I'll screw that on. If you do this, I don't like how it looks. And then this hangs down here, which is probably gonna kink. Yeah. This? Yeah, it's too long. And then you're also gonna have water sitting in the head, which yeah. might kill the seal eventually. But if we run it this way, it makes more sense to me that way. Yeah, it looks better. And if anything, it'll like if water sitting in this hose, it'll wreck the hose, but it won't eventually wreck the seal in the. So that's the way we're gonna do it. No leaks, perfect. This is all she is. Just like that, pretty simple. And then this guy is how we control the water. So if I can't get the controls down there perfect for this pressure, I can control the pressure up here, so we can rain shower or blast it. Put that guy back on, just in the middle of everything, so if we just want to quick put it there so we can grab it and continue to shower, or it stays up here if we just want to shower hands free. 